What is up everybody? James Jackson here back again with another video. If you're new to my channel, I do tips and tricks and news and reviews for the film and video making industry. So if you do like the content here, please make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell so you can stay up to date on all the content going forth. So this one is going to be, I am going to apologize in advance, it's going to probably be a little bit of more of a raw cut uh, video than anything because, well, today is my birthday and uh, I am going to be going out. So I'm trying to just rush and get this out to you guys really quickly uh, and so you guys can at least have the content. Uh, but so we're going to talk today about the dynamic range of the R5 because this has been something that I have heard for a bit of time talking about that the R5's dynamic range is not that good. Um, and to me, I feel like there's a lot of people who have been misusing this R5 and not really properly exposing it correctly because they've been working with other cameras that have basically taught them to ETTR. For those of you that don't know what that means, that means exposed to the right, meaning overexposed. You know, you go in, you protect your shadows uh, and your skin tones because if you underexpose the skin tones in a lot of cameras, they tend to fall apart easily when you try to pull them up. Uh, the R5 is a little bit differently, especially when if you're maximizing the dynamic range. You actually want to expose for the highlights. Obviously, you want to try to get the exposure correctly if possible in terms of skin. But uh, in a lot of scenarios, you're probably going to want to, uh, if you're dealing with high dynamic range with the R5, you want to expose to protect the highlights. Um, because there's actually a lot of wiggle room in the shadows and in the blacks that you can still get a good image, especially if you're recording all eye and more particularly raw, there's so much details. And I have actually a clip for you guys that I took out uh, to uh, Spruce Harbor in Philadelphia. I just went in, it was like midday, so there was a lot of shadows. It was by the water, so there's a lot of reflections. There's ships that have shine to them, so there's a lot of reflections going around. And I want you guys to take a look at it to see for yourself, and then we'll get back. So first, check out the video. Okay, uh, we're back. Thank you guys for enjoying the video. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Uh, so uh, I wanted to show you guys just the clips that we've done, a couple of them, uh, not all of them, but I wanted to just show you guys some of the clips so you guys can see. Uh, essentially, I basically was using the Atomos Shinobi uh, to monitor my exposure and using the false colors because I personally love false color. False color to me is the best exposure tool uh, in the business. And Basically, I was just make sure I have NDs and just expose them correctly. So make sure you have the right tools and everything. So let's cut to DaVinci Resolve real quick and let's go right into it. So as you guys can see here, 
this is like the first shot that you guys saw in the clip. And if you look down in the waveform monitor, as you will see, nothing is clipped. Nothing about this footage is clipped. And the thing that I need to, uh, I think the thing we need to monitor, especially if you're planning to film RAW, because RAW is going to give you the most dynamic range, because that gives you access to C-Log 2, which is has probably one of the nicest highlight roll-offs of, of Canon's Gamma Curve. Problem is, and there, look, there, this isn't perfect, because the problem with the R5 is that there's no way to monitor it in camera um, in terms of monitoring the exposure in terms of C-Log2, so you can't really see it. Um, now, with the Shinobi, what's cool about it is, is that you can set it up to sort of where it will kind of mimic the look of of C-Log2. It's not going to give you a perfect look, but it's a good, but it's good enough that if you were to using the exposure monitors on the Shin Shinobi's like false color, you can probably see where it's going to be clipped. And that's pretty much how I did it, because, t because with... Um, C log two, you don't want to expose higher than uh 82% I IRE. So, really, like all this stuff right here, you don't want to go any higher, otherwise, it will clip. But as you can see, I'm just under 82% IRE's, and I think the closest thing to being clipped is this part right here. But as you guys can see, it's still not clipped. This image is is still a very, very clean, none of the sky is blown out. And then I want to go to the moosh to the Mashulu, which is something I also got. Again, look at the look at the waveform. Nothing is clipped. And we're dealing with this right here, which is sort of creating a reflection out in the sh down into the water. We got shine throughout all the different images. And so there's a lot of things going on in terms of dynamic range. And then let's actually go here to this one because this I love this one because you got all the shadow parts of the under part of the walkway here and then you got reflections bouncing off of the ship here but again look at the scene and you can see nothing is clipped look at the look at the, again look at the waveform monitor nothing is clipped nothing in this scene is clipped and i'll blow it up for you guys real quick so you guys can see large it but yeah, take a look. Nothing about this. And look how much information we got in the shadows. We still got all that information coming off the ship, which is probably the ho the hottest part. Uh, all We still got we got nice clear size. And again, let me just point out, this is about 1 o'clock in the afternoon. So this is, this is not a uh, golden hour. This is high time. So there's a lot of contrast going on, going on. And as you guys see, you know, we clearly have enough uh, wiggle room dynamic range to get shots like this. Uh, this is the probably the one part where I did get clipping, and you'll see it here. You probably did see it in the video, uh, but this one is kind of like an extreme because as you will see as we scroll down here, you'll notice when the clipping happens. So as we go down, ah, see as you'll see, we're getting we're clipping. Um, and it's really because this thing is super, this right here is super reflective and I'll pull it, let me go full screen for you guys. This is basically super, so we're getting all this reflection that is directly coming from the sun. So yeah, we're going to get a lot of clipping here. Uh, and, but as you can see, we still got a lot of, for most part, it held its image on. So this is, and this was me trying to push it at least towards the ND, what I, I could with my NDs, just push as much as I can without oh, underexposing my middle grays in this shot, basically just exposing correctly. So the moral of the story I'm trying to make is if you just get a good monitor and expose correctly, I would say get a monitor that can maybe also sort of mimic the look of C-Log2 out of your camera. Because even though when I'm shooting raw, it's not sending out Canalog 2. It can still, that's what I love about the Shinobi is that it can mimic it. But the moral of the story is, people, just make sure you're monitoring your stuff correctly. And this camera can handle so many different dynamic range shots. Maybe not to the full, it's not, look, but it's not going to hand it to the full extent like the Cinema Line cameras. They definitely have. My C200 still has a slightly better dynamic range than the R5, 
but the R5 is not that far off in terms of its dynamic range. It, but And again, I think the other problem is, is that really to uti fully utilize the dynamic range, you have to go in RAW. Hopefully, Canon will come out with this firmware update in the near future. Uh, so we can maybe at least get Canalog 3, if not Canalog 2, we can get Canalog 3 so we can get a better utilization of the dynamic range in these footage. I really hope they give us Canalog 2 so we can really maximize what this camera's capabilities are with this sensor. Because this is actually a really, really good sensor. So if anybody talks to you and tells you that the, the dynamic range of this camera is crap, you can show them these files and I will pull, I will also leave a link to these files so you guys can uh, grab them for yourselves. Now remember, these are 8K raw files, so they're big, they're massive. So just be prepared that if you make sure if your computer can handle it. But I'll share these with you guys so you guys can take a look for yourselves. Uh, but that's it for me. Uh, just something really quick. I wanted to show, yes, this camera is definitely capable of handling um, high contrast situations. Obviously, there is a limit, but for the most part. So if you're dealing with high dynamic range situations, uh, you probably definitely want to shoot in RAW for with this camera. Out, but it, however, if it seems like it's going to be really, really contrast, yes, you probably want to look at some of the, either look at maybe the A7S Mark III or the FX6 or the C, or the CinemaLine cameras from Canon, uh, which do better dynamic range than this. But overall, this is my thoughts. I would love to know what you guys think of this. Let me know. Leave a comment below. And make sure to hit the subscribe button once again. And until next time, take care, everyone.